Hello there, and welcome to this video highlighting one of the new features or enhancements to the Cisco Secure Firewall. This is one in a series of videos created to discuss and demonstrate the latest updates within the 6.7 release of the software. Here, I'll talk about and show you a deployment enhancement called Interface Object Optimization. The main purpose of this enhancement is to reduce the number of expanded rules that are needed when deploying a firewall policy. Interface object optimization adds support for interface groups within the data plane of the managed device. This provides a one-to-one -one mapping between the firepower management center access list and pre-filter rules and the data plane access list on managed devices. The benefit this brings to your deployment is a simplified rule structure on managed devices and a reduction in rule expansion, which helps to maximize resource utilization. After a short overview, I'll take you through an example configuration and demonstrate the differences between having the interface object optimization feature enabled or disabled. For those people familiar with the solution, you will know that when configuring access control policies, you have the ability to define security zones and or interface groups as source or destination matching criteria. For those new to the solution, a security zone is a logical grouping in which an administrator can assign firewall interfaces to. It makes designing security policies simpler and more efficient. Prior to the 6.7 release, the access control rules that utilize the security zone or interface group fields as matching criteria would need to be expanded as the policy was deployed and applied to the managed device. This could result in what is called rule explosion, depending on how the access control rules are defined. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have a firewall that has four interfaces. As you can see, two interfaces are defined as inside and the other two interfaces are defined as outside. Now, if we create two security zones, let's call them inside and outside for clarity, and then we assign interfaces to each zone. So as you can see here, the outside zone contains the interfaces outside and outside two, whilst our inside zone contains the interfaces inside and inside two. You can also see two network group objects defined. One includes devices on our inside network and the other includes devices on the outside networks. From a traffic flow perspective, we may want to allow traffic from our inside hosts to pass from our in inside security zone to the outside security zone. We also may want some outside hosts to be allowed from the outside security zone to the inside security zone. So from this, we can create two access control rules. So let's take a look at what happens. As you can see, we have our two access control rules, one allowing traffic from the inside security zone to the outside security zone, where the source network includes devices defined in the inside host network object, and the other allowing traffic from the outside security zone to the inside security zone, where the source network includes devices defined in the outside hosts network object. Now, when we deploy that policy to the managed firewall device and take a look at the installed rules, we can see that from the two rules defined in the access control policy on our firepower management center, the device has expanded those rules into eight lines of access control list. This is because prior to version 6.7, the data plane on the managed devices didn't support the security zone or interface group configuration and instead had to break the access control rules down to create entries per interface. So you can see that depending on how you define your access control policy, you could end up with a rule explosion that could potentially have an impact on available resources. Now let's take a look at what happens when we enable the interface object optimization feature. To access this new feature, you will need to navigate to devices, device management, and then click on the devices you want to configure. Here you can see on the interfaces tab that we have our two inside and two outside interfaces defined along with the corresponding security zones. Next, click on the device tab and scroll down to the advanced settings box. Here you can see the interface object optimization option, which is disabled by default. Click on the pencil icon to edit the advanced settings. Enable the checkbox for interface object optimization and then read the warning message that appears. This message tells you about the advantages that, in, that the interface optimization brings, as well as recommending to also enable object group search to add further benefits. For the purpose of this video, I will just be enabling the interface object optimization. 
When you have read the message, click OK and then click Save to complete the changes to the device advanced settings. The final thing we need to do is to deploy the policy to the managed device to make changes take effect. Once deployed, and we take a look at the policy installed on the managed device, we can see that instead of the eight lines we saw previously, we now see only two lines matching the configuration of the access control policy. So you can see from this how this feature simplifies the deployment whilst also maximizes performance. Thank you for taking the time to watch this update video. There is more content available covering the other new features in the 6.7 release, as well as new content covering topics associated with the Cisco Secure Firewall. Hope to see you again soon.